we are. Oh, sorry, everybody. Welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me see some shark emojis in the comments if you can hear me. Welcome, welcome, everybody. If you can hear me, please drop some shark emojis. Oh, we got shark emojis. Amazing. Thank you all so much. Welcome, everybody. We are here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And today we are going to be diving with sharks. So we're about to hand off the camera to our divers who are going to be hanging out with sharks. My name is Madeline. I am behind the computer and the microphone today. And I am joined with Aquarius Rachel, if you want to say hi, Rachel. Hi, everyone. Very cool. All right. So we are going to pass the camera over to our divers. And it'll take us just a few seconds before we get the dive stream. Welcome, everybody. Oh, I'm so excited. This is going to be a really, really cool live. Do me a favor and share this live with your family and your friends. That way they can get in on the fun. All right. And we are about to go underwater, everybody. So right now you're watching our explore.org webcam of Shark Lagoon. And we are upside down with that camera. There, perfect. <laughs> All right. I'm going to cut over to our webcam. Rachel, do you want to introduce our divers today? Yes, this is Melissa. She's going to be the safety diver. And the one holding the camera is Heidi. Hi, Hi Heidi. Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Very cool. So they are about to dive underwater with our sharks. Is that right, Rachel? Yes, that's correct. Are you guys nervous? No. <laughs> so, Rachel, why would it, our divers be nervous to dive with sharks? Well, I don't think they should be nervous to dive with sharks, but apparently a lot of people think sharks are pretty scary. But the sharks we have here in this exhibit are not scary at all, as are most sharks out in the ocean. Uh, they are very safe to interact with. However, the reason why we have a safety diver in this exhibit is because there is a potential for an accident to happen. Um, and when I say an accident, it mostly means like a working diver might accidentally bump into one of our sharks, and that's when we might run into an issue. So it's a safety diver's job to actually make sure that the working diver is not going to accidentally bump into the shark or vice versa. Um, and so that's all they do. All the safety diver does is monitors the sharks. Uh, that pole is mostly a visual deterrent. We do not use it to strike any of our animals. Uh, this is their home, so we want to make sure that they are nice and happy. Um, so we do not use that for that. It's mostly to show them that uh, we are working here and they kindly swim away. Amazing. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, everybody, for hopping on. This is so cool. You guys, we are officially diving live on TikTok inside of Shark Lagoon with the Aquarium of the Pacific Sharks, and our divers are inside of the exhibit right now, live here on TikTok. This is amazing. Let me know how we sound, you guys. This is our first time streaming this exhibit from inside, so let me know how I sound. Let me know how it looks. Let's see some shark emojis if you are um, enjoying the stream so far. Oh, I'm so excited. Everybody's being so nice in the comments. Thank you so much. We have another person named Heidi in the chat as well. Heidi, how are you doing this underwater and in on TikTok Live? Just kidding. <laughs> That's Different amazing. Heidi. Different Heidi. <laughs> Very cool. Rachel, I'm going to talk over here so that way they don't get me on your mic too, just, just so you know. Yeah, you got so it. So what's happening right now, TikTok? My name is Madeline. I am joined with Aquarius Rachel, and we are above water. We are not inside of the habitat. Um, we have our divers, Heidi and Melissa, inside of the water. And what you're seeing right now is a zebra shark. Rachel, can you tell us a little bit about zebra sharks? Yeah, so it looks like this one is Baby, our zebra shark. Uh, she is about seven feet long and 120 pounds. And she's about a fully grown adult zebra shark, so she shouldn't get too much bigger than this. But as you can see, she is lying at the bottom of the exhibit. This is very normal for this species. Uh, they like to hang out at the bottom of the ocean floor naturally. Uh, the way that they can do that is they have these special holes behind their eyes that are called spiracles. And those spiracles actively pump water so that they can continually have water flow over their gills so that they can then breathe. And you can see she, you can see those spiracles right there behind her eyes, her cute little mouth. She's so cute. Everybody say hello to baby the zebra shark. We just saw a black tip reef shark swim by in the background. That was so amazing. You guys, awesome. if you're just tuning in, welcome. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And you are on a live dive underwater inside of our shark habitat. So we are hanging out with Baby the Zebra Shark and mm -hmm. Aquarius Rachel. Um, baby underwater, Aquarius Rachel on, above water. <laughs> and we are learning all about sharks today. So we'll do our best to answer as many questions as we can. But I think we're all going to be a little distracted by how cool it is 
to be diving underwater. I saw someone ask if we are AZA accredited. Yes, we are. We are a nonprofit aquarium with a focus on conservation and education. And some of our sharks are actually uh, participating in conservation efforts. Is that right, Rachel? Yes, that is correct. Uh, we have a couple sharks that are participating in conservation efforts. We do a lot of reproductive studies on these animals, um, including artificial insemination. Uh, not this zebra shark, but our other zebra shark, Fern, was part of an artificial insemination study that was successful. We had two off offspring from that, one of which is still with us, um, but in our tropical reef habitat. So it's it's a pretty incredible story to highlight here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Very cool. Let's talk about Shark Lagoon as a habitat. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about some of the animals that live here overall, where we are at the aquarium, maybe even the water temperature? Sure. Um, so the water temperature is 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, these are all tropical species of sharks. Um, and we do have some rays in here as well. Um, as you can see, we have artificial corals in here uh, to help make it look as natural as possible, as well as some uh, bony fish. Um, it looks like there's Melissa again. <laughs> um, so uh, the species of sharks we have in here include our two species of zebra sharks. We also have two, or not species, two individuals of zebra sharks. Um, and we also have two black tip reef sharks. Uh, we have one gray reef shark. Um, and it looks like we're going to be checking out our Olive Ridley sea oh turtle named Theo. Goodness. You're looking at a turtle butt right <laughs> You're there. You're a turtle booty, everybody. <laughs> this is Theo. He is an Olive Ridley sea turtle, and we're in his little turtle cave. Is that right, Rachel? That is his cave. That is his favorite spot to hang out during the day. Oh, my goodness. He is really, really cute. I wonder if he'll come out and make an appearance. He's a little shy, it seems. Um, but Theo is a really... Theo, right? Or is this Theo? Theo. Theo. Yeah, Theo. We have two Olive Ridley uh, sea turtles. This is Theo, and then we also have Lou, and they both came to the Aquarium of the Pacific um, as rescues. They were actually rescued as eggs, and they have lived here at our aquarium since before we opened in 1998. So they're they're getting up there in age, but they, they live quite a long time, right, Rachel? Yes, they do. I'm not too sure what the total we'll to um, age for this species is, uh, species is, but I believe sea turtles can live up to 100. Wow, incredible. That's amazing. Hey, we just got our first donation. Thank you so much for your $15 donation. We are a nonprofit aquarium with a focus on conservation and education. And 100% of your donation here on TikTok Live goes right back to the 12,000 animals that call us home. And like I said, that's conservation and education efforts. Um, where are we located? We are in Long Beach, California, but currently you guys are watching inside of Shark Lagoon. We have divers in the water here live on TikTok. I am personally not in the water, although it is kind of warm out. I bet it would feel pretty good to get in there. But myself, Madeline, and Aquarius Rachel are above water while our divers um, are underwater diving inside of the habitat. This is very cool. Rachel, mm -hmm. what is that pole that they have with them underwater? So that pole is called a shepherd's pole, and it essentially lets the sharks know that we're um, in, like in that space. All it is is a visual deterrent. Uh, we do not use it to strike any of our animals. Uh, a lot of people tend to think that's what that is, uh, but that's not the case. All we do is we extend it out and tell the sharks that we're there, and they usually see it and then swim away. Occasionally, they might uh, not be paying attention. This is normally our sand tiger shark who does a lot of sleeping during the day, and he kind of just doesn't see it sometimes, and then we'll bonk the end of it, and then that wakes him up, and he's like, oh, you guys are here. Let me swim away now. Very cool. And who is this lovely lady that we have on screen right now? That is our reticulated whiptail ray. Isn't she beautiful? She's beautiful and she's huge. Yes. Um, she's one of the largest animals we have here at the aquarium, That right? is correct. She is our largest fish that we have here at the aquarium. And she is currently about 400 pounds and 11 feet long. Very cool. And who is this handsome fellow swimming <laughs> past us right now? So this is our sand tiger shark, also known as Big Guy. And uh, he is eight feet long and 180 pounds. He is my favorite shark in this habitat. I know I'm not supposed mm -hmm. to have favorites, but I'm really glad TikTok gets to see him, um, his face up close because he has that big smile. Mm -hmm. And we usually do our shark screens from above water where you really don't get to see that like very distinguishing feature that he has, that giant smile. Oh, um, totally. Can we talk about their teeth a little bit? Yes, definitely. A lot of people look at the sand tiger shark and see those teeth and they are often fearful of him because of that. Uh, but those teeth are actually very long and quite fragile. Those teeth are actually meant to hold small slippery prey like small fish and squid. They are not meant for larger prey types uh, so the, he's not very 
good at ripping and tearing his prey. So the type of food that we offer, offer him are a variety of different fish items that are usually about eight inches in length, nothing too much bigger than that. He's not a big fan of super big pieces of food. Very cool. And I see that we have stingrays in our shark lagoon habitat. Mm -hmm. Are they related at all? Yes, sharks and rays are very closely related. They are both part of a group of animals called elasmobranchs. They are a type of cartilaginous fish. That means their skeletal system is made up of cartilage. Uh, cartilage is the same material that you'll find in your nose and in your ears, but their entire skeleton is made up of that cartilage. And this is really helpful to these animals because it makes them nice and light and very flexible. That allows them to swim more efficiently through the water. Very cool. Rachel, this is so much fun. Our divers are currently in the water and we are above water. We're dry right now, although a little dip sounds kind of nice right now. But Rachel, do you ever dive with these animals? Yes, I dive this exhibit all the time. Uh, this exhibit needs a lot of work and love, so I'll go in and uh, clean the sand. We do that via a process called hydrovacking. It's essentially a vacuum for the substrate. Oh, look at that smile. <laughs> um, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, and then we Someone also. Someone please screenshot this. This is oh my too God. cute. That is adorable. <laughs> and then we also scrub the walls as well as clean the window. And then uh, the rocks actually can come completely out of the exhibit. They are artificial corals. Uh, that means they're not real. So those can come out of the water, and we'll let that sun bleach for a couple days, and then we will place them right back when they look when they look nice and pretty again. Very cool. And what animal are we looking at right now? This is a zebra shark, and she's just hanging out at the bottom of the exhibit, which is very normal for her. She normally likes to hang out the bottom here, um, and occasionally she'll swim up and do a lap or two. Uh, some people think that all sharks have to continually swim in order to breathe, but that's not the case. As you can see, these guys are just chilling, and that's because they have those special adaptation called um, uh, spiracles, which allow them to breathe. Very cool. It looks like we have some people here at the aquarium who are currently watching the live and waving through the window. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> if you want to visit the Aquarium of the Pacific, you can. We recommend making a reservation, and you can do so at the link in our bio. We are in Long Beach, California, and we are home to over 12,000 animals. We're live every Tuesday here on TikTok at 3 p.m. Pacific showcasing different animals. Today, of course, we're hanging out with sharks. Um, last time we were live, we were hanging out with octopuses. So just make sure you give us a follow if you don't already and um, stay tuned for future live streams. But we're not going anywhere yet. We have just begun. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are inside of Shark Lagoon. Um, it's an outdoor habitat, actually, and it's a very lovely day out here. Um, Rachel, can you talk a little bit about becoming an aquarist and, and what you could do to become an aquarist if someone was interested? Sure, definitely. So to become an aquarist, you do need a degree in marine biology, and then you need lots of experience that are unpaid. So usually volunteer work at an aquarium or even an internship or two is very crucial to getting your foot in the door. And usually starting in a small role, like a part-time position is most common. Oh, and of course, since we do so much diving in our exhibits, you do need a, to be a scuba diver in order to be an aquarist. Very cool. Let's talk about shark anatomy and get to know our sharks a little bit more. How can you tell the difference between a male and a female shark? That's a great question. So the difference between a male and a female shark is if you look at their secondary fins on the side of their bodies, those are called pelvic fins. Um, and males will have an extended part that's called claspers. Um, and females do not have those. So we have one male shark in this exhibit, and that is our sand tiger shark. Uh, so when he cruises by, you'll get a nice look at those claspers. Um, and all the other sharks in here are females, so they do not have those. Very cool. So even though we have female sharks in here, um, we do find eggs, right? Yes, we do. Our zebra sharks lay eggs pretty much constantly. Uh, the zebra sharks will lay about six to eight uh, eggs um, every two to three months or so. So we are always pulling out eggs. And um, yeah, so the eggs are usually about six inches or so. So they're pretty large eggs. And uh, they have this really interesting um, stringy material that's attached to those eggs because the zebra sharks need that to help them wrap the egg around a piece of coral so that egg doesn't float away or um, go out to sea out in the ocean. 
Very cool. I saw someone asking. They took some very sweet screenshots. Um, we'd love it if you shared it on your other social media accounts like Instagram, Twitter, um, and tagged us in them. That would be awesome. We'd love to see them. Uh, we are underwater. We're live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. This is not a loop. This is actually happening live right now. Personally, I am not underwater, although it sounds really nice. I am above water with Aquarius Rachel and our AV team. Shout out to them for making this happen. Woohoo. <laughs> They're rolling their eyes at me right now. You guys can't see that. Um, let's see. Let's catch up on some comments. Uh, yeah, we are underwater live. This is so cool. Someone said that they love sharks, that they're their favorite animal. Aww. Rachel, do you have a favorite animal? I do really, really love sharks. I um, When I first got hired into this uh, role, I had not worked with sharks before, and so I wasn't really too sure what I'd be getting into, but ever since working with them, I've had so much love and appreciation for these animals. They're just so incredible. Very cool. Looks like we got a close-up on Theo, the olive ridley sea turtle. Yay. Um, how are we able to have a sea turtle inside this habitat? Oh, his face is so cute. <laughs> the little oh noses. My goodness. <laughs> um, so we can have a sea turtle in with our sharks because he's very large and all of our sharks are really small. And the shark species that we have in with this sea turtle are not known to be um, uh, sharks that eat sea turtles. So these guys are totally fine to interact with each other. And actually, I think sea the sea turtle, uh, Theo, he's more of the boss of this exhibit That's than the I sharks heard. are. Oh, I yeah. he kind of runs the exhibit. There he goes on mm -hmm. his swim. Oh, my gosh, this is so cool. If you're just joining us, welcome. We are live here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, and I think we lost connection for a moment. So I'm going to transition over to the webcam that's in the water. Give us one second while we go back underwater. But this webcam that you're watching now is our explore.org webcam, and it is streaming live from inside the habitat. So I wonder if we're going to be able to see our diver swim by. We will wait and find out. But in the meantime, let's catch up on some more comments. Um, Rachel, we have tropical fish inside of this habitat. Mm -hmm. um, why don't the sharks eat them? So sharks are very efficient feeders, um, AKA pretty lazy. Uh, they really only go after prey that is hurt or sick or injured. Uh, so as long as our fish are nice and healthy, these sharks will not go after those fish. Uh, these fish are very quick and agile um, because they are so healthy. Uh, so if a shark is interested in that one, the fish will just swim away. But because of that, the sharks have discovered that these are not a food item. Um, they don't mess with them at all. And then we do feed our sharks uh, regularly they get fed once a day we only have one fasting day um, and uh, so these guys get fed quite a bit and they have no need to eat their friends in here so it's a nice um, uh, coexistence for all animals involved very cool. And Rachel, do you ever swim with the sharks? Do you ever get in there and dive? Yes, I do. I get in here all the time. I have such a great time. Uh, the sharks are so cool to interact with. Uh, occasionally, like if I'm hydrovacking, which is um, like a vacuuming of the sand, uh, sometimes I'll hit a spot that hasn't been cleaned in a while, so it's got a little bit of a different smell. Sometimes the sharks will come over and kind of investigate what I'm doing. Um, but for the most part, they completely ignore me and they're doing exactly what you're seeing right now on the explore.org camera which is swim by very cool so we are watching our explore.org camera right now we're going to try and get our live feedback um, from inside the exhibit with our divers but it's live it's tiktok live <laughs> and we're underwater so who knows what happened absolutely <laughs> we'll have to find out but in the meantime we'll answer some more questions um here on live stream Let's catch up. Yes, it is Shark Week every week here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Um, oh, nice. We're live here on TikTok, everybody. Thank you so much for hopping on with us. We have raised $20 on this live stream so far. Thank you so much Yay, for donating. Thank you. We are a nonprofit aquarium with a focus on conservation and education. And 100% of your donation comes right back to uh, the 12,000 animals that call us home. Okay, catching up on comments. Do we have dolphins? No, we do not have dolphins at our aquarium, but we do see them daily in our whale watches. Someone says that their favorite shark is zebra sharks. Oh, do we yay. have zebra sharks inside this exhibit, Rachel? Yes, we have two zebra sharks. One's named Baby and the other's named is Fern. And these zebra sharks are incredible. Despite the name zebra shark, they do not have stripes. They have spots. So some people that, are, uh, that might know this species as uh, leopard sharks, and you're not 
completely wrong. Uh, in Australia, they do call this species the leopard sharks. Here in California, we don't call zebra sharks leopard sharks because we have another species of shark called the leopard shark. So we don't want two species with the same common name. That would be entirely confusing. Uh, so zebra sharks are incredible. They are about seven feet long and 120 pounds, and they are fully grown. Each zebra shark lays about six to eight weeks every two months. So we are constantly pulling out zebra shark eggs from this exhibit. Someone asked if we had giraffe sharks. Giraffe sharks. If there's a, giraffe, <laughs> a common name, giraffe shark, I have not heard of it. That's, that's hilarious. That is hilarious. All right, everybody. I think we have lost our dive camera feed, unfortunately, but we will still be able to see what's happening inside of the water and talk about what's swimming by our explore.org camera. Um, this is a great question. Rachel, do you like your job and why? <laughs> yes, I love my job. Uh, the animals are the most incredible part of my job. I love working with them. Uh, we do a lot of training with the sharks, which is pretty mind-blowing. These animals are very smart. Uh, we are able to train them to come to a target and move that target around and the sharks will follow it. Uh, we can train these animals to swim through a stretcher. Uh, and a stretcher is essentially a sling with two poles. Um, and this is very important for their care. We do need to do routine physicals on all of our animals, which involves our veterinary staff taking a close look at that animal as well as, well as doing blood draws. And occasionally we we will do ultrasounds also on those individuals, especially our females, just to make sure everything's nice and healthy on the insides. Um, so by training our sharks to swim through a stretcher, it really allows us easy access to that individual. And for example, our zebra sharks are even trained to swim or do something called tonic immobility on command. Now all sharks can go into tonic immobility. Tonic immobility is the state in which a when a shark is upside down, they go into a kind of catatonic state. Um, so by training the zebra sharks to go into this cat this cat excuse me, catatonic state. Got this, yeah, got it. Uh, also known as tonic immobility. It allows our veterinary staff to do the blood draws and the ultrasounds on command, which is super awesome. Very cool. Rachel, what do the animals inside this habitat eat? Uh, they mostly eat fish. Um, that's for all of the fast swimming sharks, like our black tip reef sharks, our gray reef shark, the sandbar, and the sand tiger shark. Uh, but the zebra sharks and the rays also like to eat squid and clam. We like to offer our animals a wide variety of different types of fish. So we'll offer them things like mackerel, mahi-mahi, mullet, sardines, capelin, herring occasionally. We do try to, since these are tropical species of sharks, we try to offer them tropical species of fish as well because they there are nutritional differences between tropical fish and cold water fish. Um, so by making sure that you're offering them the correct type of food, you can make sure that you're giving them a, a complete nutritional diet. Oh, and then of course we do put vitamins in all of their foods so that they can have even a better balanced diet. Very cool. Um, we just saw our divers, they're still we unfortunately can't communicate with them while they're <laughs> underwater, but they're still doing an incredible job of using the camera that is not working right now. But you can see what it looks like. They're actually diving with sharks right now. You can see the sharks are kind of just uninterested. They're really just kind of doing their own thing, yep. right, Rachel? Yep, they have no interest in the divers. They're so used to people. Now, if this were out in the ocean and a shark saw divers, especially in a spot where sharks don't use, normally see divers, those sharks would uh, flee and go away as fast as they can because sharks are very skittish animals. Now if you go to a, a place where there's more divers, um, I know there's a lot of like e uh, cool ecotourism eco spots where people like to highlight diving with sharks out in the oceans. Um, those those spots tend to be a little bit uh, better for shark viewing because the sharks are used to people. Um, so, But sharks just want to cruise around and explore their habitat and all they do is they see the person and then they swim away. So not that interesting, really. <laughs> yeah, sharks are amazing creatures. We're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. And you can see we have divers hanging out in the water with sharks. We did have connection to that camera that they were holding. Unfortunately, we cannot communicate that that camera is no longer working. So we're just watching them hang out in the water and it is still very cool. 
Um, but my name is Madeline. I am above water with Aquarius Rachel, and we get to chat about sharks, and she can answer all your questions. And the next question I'm going to ask her is, what is the biggest shark at our aquarium? The biggest shark that we have here at our aquarium is our sand tiger shark. Uh, he is eight feet long and 180 pounds. Very cool. He is not the largest animal we have here at the aquarium that is or correct. in this habitat, right? Nope. Yeah, our largest uh, fish and uh, individual in this habitat is our reticulated whiptail ray. She is the big stingray that you might see swim past the camera at some point. Um, and she is 11 feet long. And well, we weighed her 10 years ago, uh, and she weighed about 400 pounds. She's grown a little bit since then, so I'm sure she weighs a little bit more than that 400 pounds. But since she's so big, she's a little difficult to do yearly physicals on her, so we don't always grab her and like weigh a 400 pound animal. <laughs> oh, our, both of our zebra sharks of this habitat just swam by. That was really special. We have baby mm -hmm. and fern in here. Is yes, that right, we Rachel? Do. Very cool. And Fern is actually a charter animal, which yes. means that she has lived at our aquarium since before we opened in 1998. Um, and she's incredible. She has been a part of a, lots of research ex uh, research projects. Is that mm -hmm. correct, Rachel? Yes, that's correct. She's been part of a uh, an artificial insemination study, which was successful. We had two offspring from that, uh, one of which is in our tropical reef habitat. And um, yeah, it's a really cool opportunity um, working here uh, that we are able to work with conservation and research projects with our sharks and rays. Very cool. And this isn't the only area in the aquarium that we have sharks. Is that right? That's correct. We have sharks pretty much in every gallery. Uh, in our blue cavern, we have leopard sharks. In our tropical reef, there are also zebra sharks in there, as well as a bonnethead shark. Um, in our Southern California gallery, you can find a little horn shark. Um, so basically, any large exhibit, you can find a shark in it. Yeah, you can come visit them. We are open to the public. We're in Long Beach, California, and we are the Aquarium of the Pacific. If you don't already follow us, I would recommend following us here on TikTok because we're live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific. Um, and today's stream is really, really fun. It, it started off wonderful, and it's still going great. But we were actually getting that live feed from the divers holding that camera. Unfortunately, it cut out, but it's water. It's a camera, who knows what happened. Our AV, our amazing AV team will figure it out, <laughs> I promise. And hopefully we can do this again soon. But we're gonna be live for about another 15 minutes or so. So we're gonna catch up on more questions. Um, someone said that they were here a few weeks ago. I would love to see some blue heart emojis in the chat if you had visited our aquarium before in Long Beach, California. Let us know. And in the meantime, I'm going to ask Rachel another question. Rachel, if someone wants to do your job like diving with sharks and being an aquarist at an mm -hmm. aquarium, do you have any advice for them? Yes, I do. If you have any interest in becoming a marine biologist or working as an aquarist like what I do, um, I highly recommend getting a degree in marine biology and then um, just or even just biology, too, because I know a lot of my coworkers got their degrees in biology. Um, but having an emphasis in the oceans is really important, uh, going out and exploring the uh, natural habitats by seeing tide, uh, seeing tide pools and snorkeling, or if you scuba dive already, uh, scuba diving is really important, just like building up that passion for the ocean and the marine life that live there. Um, and then also uh, by volunteering at local aquariums that have uh, marine animals, um, and then uh, getting an internship. And so those are all really important to becoming an Aquarius. Very cool. I see lots of blue hearts in the chat. That makes me so happy. Uh, I asked if you um, had visited the Aquarium of the Pacific before here in Long Beach, California, if you could drop a blue heart in the chat. Um, but technically, everybody should be dropping blue hearts because you are visiting now, even though it's virtual. We're just so happy to connect with you here on TikTok Live, and hopefully you can come visit in the future. Um, we are open to the public. You can make a reservation at the link in our bio. We definitely recommend it. Uh, lots of great questions coming in. We'll keep answering them. Uh, Rachel, how do we name the sharks? <laughs> oh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> um, because not all of us like naming the sharks. So a lot of the times we don't name them because we don't want to treat them as like a pet. So for example, our largest <laughs> female black tip reef shark, we lovingly call her Shark Lagoon female black tip, um, <laughs> which normally shortens down to just Shark Lagoon, which is a little confusing because she lives in the habitat called Shark Lagoon. 
Um, but her little sister, for lack of better words, is not related at all. Um, the smaller black tip female, her name is Barbara. And the reason why she has a name um, is because she was actually donated to us uh, with that name. So it's a combination between identifiers and if an animal came to us with a pre-existing name. Very cool. So they're kind of more like nicknames, right? Yes, definitely. Amazing. This is so cool. All right, everybody. We are here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific. You are watching our explore.org webcam inside of Shark Lagoon. Rachel, how large is this habitat? That is a great question as well. So this habitat is six feet deep. It is 50 feet long and 30 feet wide. Um, and then that's not including our husbandry pool. That is the gated section. You can kind of see it past the divers. Um, so that gated section is our husbandry pool, and that's where we do any medical exams on our sharks and our rays. Very cool. If you've tuned into a shark stream before from our account, um, you have seen actually Aquarius Rachel in the water, typically mm -hmm. with Fern, the zebra shark, in that husbandry pool. Um, and it's really, really cool. This stream is a little bit different. We are actually underwater with the sharks this time. Um, and mostly to show that diving with sharks isn't scary. Yes, diving with sharks is not scary at all. Uh, these sharks are not known to be uh, dangerous. Um, and most sharks out in the ocean are not dangerous at all. Uh, so these animals are totally fine for us to dive with. We do include a safety diver in all of our dives. So we have one working diver and then one safety diver. And this safety diver's primary focus is to make sure that uh, the working diver doesn't ac accidentally collide into our sharks. So our sharks pretty much swim and they don't really pay attention to us. So, um, you, you know, an accident might happen. And that's essentially why we have the safety diver. They have a long pole with a flat end on it and it's basically a visual deterrent it tells the sharks that uh, we're in this space and that they need to swim away and that's what they do they sharks really don't like being touched so when they see something that looks like they might touch then they swim away amazing what's the average lifespan of a shark um, most sharks, it really depends on uh, the species and what temperature they live in. So these tropical species can live to like 30 years old. Um, but the really cold water, like the um, Arctic uh, Greenland shark, those guys apparently can live up to 400 years. So there's, there's a couple of factors. I mean, there's over 400 different species of sharks and they all have very different life histories. Um, and so they're all very, very different different from one another. Awesome. Do we have any great white sharks here at the Aquarium of the Pacific? No, we do not have great white sharks. Great white sharks uh, are really not suitable for um, exhibits um, within aquariums because they are so large um, and they're really a uh, pelagic or open ocean swimming shark. Uh, so they need a lot of space. Um, for example, like the sharks that we have in here, these are all reef sharks. Um, they do not cross the oceans to go from one reef to the next. They are uh, pretty, they pretty much spend the, major the majority of their lives around one reef crest. They really don't do mu too much traveling. Um, and that's why these animals are in here is um, to educate our guests and then also um, uh, because we know that they do not need a lot of um, uh, open space like a pelagic shark. Very cool. Oh, these are great questions. People want to know about the water inside of the habitat. Um, okay. Is it changed often? How do you guys treat and make sure that water is just optimal quality for the animals inside? Yeah, so the system is a 90,000 gallon system. It is all connected to one centralized filtration unit. We've got four giant sand filters. Um, we also have three giant protein skimmers, if you know what those are. Um, <laughs> and then it is also ozonated. So we have got ozone on this system and all that does is break down any uh, per, uh, particulate matter that's in the water um, and then that's about it there's nothing else really to this exhibit uh, we do uh, this exhibit is connected to our two touch exhibits um, so it is uh, tested uh, make sure that's nice and healthy for our guests as well as our animals too amazing so if you are just joining us welcome we're live here at the aquarium of the pacific and we are watching our explore.org webcam. I'm actually going to pan over just so you can see a little <laughs> bit more of what is laying on the bottom of the exhibit. Nice. Who is that on the bottom hanging out? That is our zebra shark. I can't really tell from this view who. Which one? <laughs> yeah, which one it is. Uh, but yep, yeah, that is our zebra shark. And we just had two black tip reef sharks swim by. 
Uh, they're, I really love that species. They're so cool. They've got such a cute little face. Um, and let's see who else we can see. Ooh. We've got a lot of uh, what I call bony fish or teleos because both sharks and rays are a type of fish. But uh, those guys are elasmobranchs or cartilaginous fish. Very cool. I just panned over. You can see our other zebra shark hanging oh, out at the bottom, hello. which almost makes it look like it's just one really, really long <laughs> shark, <laughs> but they're just laying side by side. That's um, amazing. That is really, really cute. And these animals, um, this specific type of shark can actually rest on the ocean floor. Is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. As you can see, they're sitting at the bottom of the exhibit. Uh, not all shark species have to continually swim in order to breathe. Uh, zebra sharks are one of those. They have the specialized uh, muscles uh, and holes on the side side of their heads called spiracles and they use these to actively draw in water and then push that right over their gills so that they can then breathe uh, but not all sharks can do this like for example our black tip reef sharks are not so special they can't do that they do have to actively swim so if I ever saw a black tip reef shark sitting at the bottom of the exhibit that would not be a good sign um, but these guys are nice and healthy so we don't have that problem very cool and what does it look like when this exhibit is um, it's lunchtime for them uh, so it's actually breakfast time. We feed these guys in the morning around 8 a.m. And we only feed them once a day. And uh, what that looks like is we have targets for all of our sharks and rays. Uh, so they are fed throughout the exhibit. Um, sharks and rays, they naturally do not compete with one another for food, um, especially across different species. So it's very important that we are target training our animals to come to a specific spot so that we do not have any competition between our animals. And also uh, by target training these animals, it's really important for their health care. Uh, we can take this target and move it into the husbandry pool, um, which is uh, where we can do our medical exam. Rachel, have you ever touched a shark? Oh, yes. I wish I could give them <laughs> hugs all the time. Uh, but yeah, I have touched sharks. It's um, important to handle them um, when you're, say, flipping a shark into tonic immobility. That's that uh, catatonic state that the sharks go into. They kind of sleep for a little bit. Um, and by flipping them into TI, tonic immobility, we are able to do that uh, shark exam. What do they feel like? Oh, they do feel rough. Um, all sharks are coated in uh, something called dermal denticles. Uh, they, the dermal denticles translates to skin teeth. Uh, now these are not like teeth like in their mouths. Uh, they're actually a type of scale that is coated in dentin. Now dentin is found in your teeth, which is where the name dermal denticles comes from. Um, but those, um, uh, dermal denticles really allow sharks to swim more efficiently through the water and to help protect them from scrapes and abrasions and other injuries. Very cool. We have a zebra shark fan club in the comments. Yes. I think that's maybe the fan favorite this stream, okay. um, which is fine because I'll be on big guy's team. I'll be on big guy the sand tiger <laughs> shark. Um, someone asked if we have a lemon shark. No, we do not have any lemon sharks in here. What about, um, someone asked if we have a tiger shark. I know we have a sand tiger shark. Yeah, we do have a sand tiger shark, but we do not have any tiger sharks in this exhibit. Those guys just get too big, and um, we don't have the space, unfortunately. But I would love to work with the tiger shark. Those guys are beautiful. Very cool. All right, Rachel, before we wrap up, do you have any advice for someone who wants to become a marine biologist and work with sharks? Sure. My recommendation is to just go to the ocean as much as you can and really spend a lot of time there. Volunteer with aquariums and get your foot in the door. Um, if you can... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Two. everyone. There's noises <laughs> happening because it's the aquarium of the Pacific That's and so noises fun. happen everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like getting an internship at an aquarium, getting your degree in either biology or marine biology, and uh, just following your passion. Incredible. Rachel, I had so much fun hanging out with you. Thank yeah. you so much for doing this. You're very welcome. Um, we'll have to do it again soon, and we'll do, maybe we won't um, go wrong underwater next time. <laughs> we'll have to see. What, we'll get to the bottom of the issue. Um, but I'm so glad you guys got to see the view from inside the habitat as well. It's really, really cool. It's a great view. And you can come see it in person. You can visit the Aquarium of the Pacific here in Long Beach. We recommend you make a reservation before you do, and you can do so at the link in our bio. I want to thank the five donors who raised over $65 for our nonprofit aquarium. We appreciate you so much. That yes, money goes you. right back to the 12,000 animals that call us home and our conservation education programs. We appreciate it so much. 
If you didn't donate, that is 100% fine. You just showing up to our weekly live streams every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Pacific is an incredible way to support our nonprofit aquarium, and we thank you so much for being here. If you don't already, throw us a follow, please, and we'll be back next week at 3 p.m. Pacific. All right, everybody, thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Rachel. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.